What if I was to tell you the Chicago Cubs would play the best team in baseball this weekend and somehow gain ground? Is that something you'd be interested in? You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Please support the show by following on your preferred audio platform, and you can watch, subscribe, and leave a comment on YouTube. Thanks so much for making us your first listen. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Oh my goodness, what a Monday to be with you whenever and wherever you may be listening After a series opening loss on Friday, the Cubs went on to have an impressive weekend, winning close games both Saturday and Sunday. Saturday was an upset victory by every measure, and Sunday they announced their presence by again slamming the door on the best team in baseball to win the series. The Cubs are now 58-54 and and in the third wildcard spot, crazy to say, and also close the gap in the NL Centrals. They are only one and a half games back there. Sam, what a time right now to be a Cubs fan, and this team is uh, rolling. Matt, isn't it kind of poetic justice? That's probably the wrong term. That all the Sunday episodes we've done for Monday, how many of them have been somber? angry, depressed, heartbroken, frustrated. And now I think it's safe to say, you correct me if I'm wrong, the happiest, most electrifying episode just where the current team is at comes on a Sunday evening going into Monday. The Chicago Cubs took two out of three from the best team in baseball since the All-Star break, more accurately since the Red Sox series. They're the hottest team in baseball, the hottest offense in baseball. And as it currently stands at 7.06 p.m. Central Time on this Sunday evening, the Chicago Cubs would make the playoffs if the season ended today. I mean, I'm going to be drinking to that. It's going to be, you know, a Gatorade. It's so, wild, right? I mean, you, you've you got to be kidding. Right. I mean, you've got to be kidding. And, you know, on Friday, Matt, the rhetoric was, you know, on, on what, what do we call the social media? What, what do we call Twitter now? X? I would just call it Twitter. Yeah, let's call it Twitter. Okay. Yeah. On Twitter, you know, the rhetoric was, Oh, different level, you know, you're not playing the Reds anymore. You're not playing the Sox right. anymore. You're, and you and I actually had a pretty good conversation off the air. We were like, well, you know what? It, it just was a bad matchup Friday. Let's see what happens the rest of the weekend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And they showed they're, up. They're, they're not playing those teams anymore. And, and they beat the Braves two out of three times. So how's that? How's yeah. that? So if you don't view the Cubs highly after this, I, I we can't help you. No, uh, they showed up and showed up with the vengeance, I would say. And and you're right. This team is is red hot. I got a couple marks for you, like we mentioned. And that's the other thing. You mentioned how this is like a happy episode, ex- most exciting. That just happened on Thursday night when we recorded. Every, every episode is a new best episode. Seriously, I, yeah. I believe you. I, yeah. I agree with that. 32 and 18 since June 9th, 15 and 4 since July 18th. Um, Saturday and Sunday were outstanding games. Oh. What a job by Assad, the bullpen, Steele, Alzali. All of a sudden, or maybe not necessarily all of a sudden, but I know the way, what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Deep lineup. Oh, I thought you were going to okay, say. Okay, impressive offensively. And uh, Jamer Candelario fitted in so well. Mike Talkman with another bang-up series. He had, fi- he had five Rockets today. Hap heating up. Bellinger yeah. still rolling. I mean, should I keep going? Or, would you, or, well, or we could, maybe, you know. While we're giving out flowers, can I give a solo, f- just Crazy. an individual, can I give an individual flower, maybe a rose to Michael Fulmer? Because- yeah, the Cubs middle closer. Because he, and you, t- I think you tweeted it out on Saturday. I, one of these days you did. But, yeah. you know, again, 
similar to Tyone. Guy struggled, wore it, and now and now a completely different role. And he, I mean, he yep. won the game Sunday. I mean, he won the game. Bases yes. loaded, one out, up two runs, and you got to deal with the top of their order, and you give up one run. There's your game. There's right. your game. And right. you know, and he was said, actually a little bit wild. Yeah, well, he hit Acuna. Yeah. And then he struck out uh, Albies and, and Riley. The 3-2 pitch to Riley was was tremendous. But the you said it about the lineup. Uh, you know, for so much of the year, Matt, they, they struggle versus righties and hit well versus lefties. The only times they've struggled in the second half, Steven Matz, Steven Matz, Montgomery, and Freed, all lefties. They have not... Not not one righty has really thrown the ball well against them in the second half, and I think it's because of the emergence of a guy like Talkman who's taken it to another level. Like you said, you just said it, so I'm not going to repeat it. But now you have Candelario, and look, I almost feel like we're under talking about Bellinger. Yeah, it, it, it is now the last few days. I think maybe so. it is now a month and a half where he has been as good as anybody in baseball, and it's it's right. it's not the way you'd think he. He doesn't strike out ever. Right. He's he he's literally spraying the ball. It's like he's like the it, basically the last month plus of the season. He's been Luis Arise with a little bit more power with power. And with two yeah with two strikes, it's yeah. from another planet. Yeah, like Arise. I think the league average two strikes is in the one eighties. Bellinger is hitting in the two eighties with two no, strikes. It's it's just it's just. He's anchoring the lineup, and then everybody around him, you know, is starting to hit all together. I mean, if yep. it, the only way this thing goes south is if it's all just a hot streak and they all slump at the same time. But like now, Hap's coming along. I mean, even that ball, right. <clears throat> excuse me, in the, I want to say it was the eighth inning, man on second, two outs on Sunday. He got a 3 0 pitch and he got a green light, and I loved it. And yeah, he just, yeah. and, he, and he just missed it to right center. Yep. But like that's that's a sign right there. Ian Happ is not hitting the ball in the air with any authority for most of the season. Mm-hmm. And um, great sign. And look, I'm just gonna say it. I mean, you were at the game. Five rockets from Talkman, an assist, an assist from right field, a stolen base. I mean, <laughs> what what more can this guy do? Well, I think you call the Mister 2023. Let's Mr. start to have that catch on. 2023, Mike Talkman, one of the backbones of this team. And he just and he, if there's anything to prove wrong, he keeps doing it. Oh well, does the defense go down in right field when he's in there? Not Suzuki. Well, he threw out a guy at one hop. No, he looked like I thought Roberto Clemente threw it. Yeah, it was it was a perfect throw. It was an absolute rocket. And he's yeah, he's smart and quick on the bases. Great plate appearances, Mister Twenty Twenty Three. And then, and then, and by the way, I mean, let's just acknowledge what a what a tremendous baseball series this was, yeah. and how and and how good a game Saturday and Sunday were because, you know, the Braves are just you know they're really good, and then how about right. late in the ga- late in the game? I think it was the eighth. Lighter Junior comes on, and you know, I went to just make a quick sandwich, and I came back, and the inning was over. Correct. I mean, he, I mean, these guys are just all stepping up together. It's, it's, it's really something to see. Uh, you know, if, if you want to be a little, you know, the only thing you could take away, I want to say critical, cause I'm not going to be critical at all, but I think Steele today, you know, he battled again. I think the Braves started to realize that he really only attacks one side of the plate. You couldn't see this cause you were at the game, but you know, guys like Albies and stuff were stepping off the plate. I think Steele, not this year because he's he's this year is already a smashing success. But maybe in the off season he tries to figure out something arm side because the only time he ever throws arm side is when he's trying to get that fastball slash cutter in and then it just it, it leaks. If he could just target something arm side because like that's what happened with Michael Harris. Michael Harris just cheated on that that pitch okay. at his last thing. But it's like even Steele. I mean, he he's thirteen and three. Yeah, and he went deeper in the game than I thought he would too. Yeah, I think you know they, they had tried to, it. They but... had to press him because they used Wisniewski on Friday, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, you got two anchors, homegrown, that that finished that started and finished the game Sunday, Steele and Alzali. Oh, and the foursome of Fulmer, Merriweather, Leiter, and Alzali. Each when each comes in, don't you feel good? Yes, at R- this I, point. Yes, and then I mean... Jose Quas. 
was Quas. filthy on Sunday. Jose Quas with a flower. I mean, he was. I love his arm angle. Always been no, a fan. He was really good. Yeah. And and that's that was nice to see. And look, it was it was just one of those weekends where, you know, not not that I wasn't there before this weekend, but you just look around and say, hey, this is really happening. Right. You just it's really happening. I mean, that was I mean, Dansby had a great I mean, you name a player who had a bad weekend that played Saturday and Sunday. I don't know. And I do consider the opponents to be notable. Oh, I, I'm not going to apologize for it. The Cubs are here. Oh. If that's not the national baseball story Monday morning, if it wasn't for the Angels going winless since the trade deadline, <laughs> then it should then it should be. Right. Uh, because the Cubs are are the hottest team in baseball. And I would qualify this. And I know it's three out of 162 is 1% of the season. But this is a statement series. Yeah. It is. Unintentionally, but yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I don't even, like, to me, like, I agree with you. But even if they lost this game nine eight, it still was a statement series. Like okay, they, wow. They're 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 playing with this team, and look, you still got work to do. But like, you can't tell me, and we'll talk about this in a bit. But you can't tell me you you want you look around the rest of the central and tell me that this team isn't the best team in this division. And that's why Matt, mm. I was such a a Grinch, sure, um, for for two months because you just look right. at the rosters. I mean, even even Jeff from the uh, Lockdown Reds during our crossover was just like, I didn't understand why the Cubs were so bad to begin with. Sure. And, and now you get the stuff that's unexpected, like Bellinger hitting, you know, like a like a like a like a like a combination of Ted Williams and Barry Bonds, and and then you get uh, Talkman coming in hitting like Stan Musial, and, and, and all these guys, okay. it, it and you put it together, it's. And by the way, Strowman's not even pitching well. Right, he's not. He's not even available. And Smiley hasn't thrown the ball well. The only guys throwing the ball fairly well are, are Steele, Tyone, and the four relievers you mentioned. And Assad. And Assad, right? You know he battled Saturday. That's right. Oh wow, what a time right now! I'm just so overjoyed. Could you say? Do you, you kind of wish that they had a day off Monday? Or are you are you okay just just running out there? Because I'm like a little I'd tired. Actually, I had actually thought they had one. Up until a few days ago when I double-checked the schedule, but they, they have, have one, one before, Thursday. Yeah, they have one before they go north of the border. Um, so I'm going to say no. Let's get back okay. out there and win a ball game. Yeah, Kodai Senga, Cubs already roughed him up once this campaign. Yeah, what was that, May? April? Yeah. No, like no, definitely not April. I think May. Okay, we're going to talk about Cubs Mets later. First, we're going to review some <laughs> – Just I almost can't get the sentence out. Yeah. We're going to review some paths to the playoffs. For the Chicago Cubs, go around the Central and the Wild Card, and we do that next. Today's episode is brought to you by one of our new sponsors on the show, Dave. At one time or another, we all need a little financial help. That's why Dave is great. Dave can get you cash when you need a hand between paychecks and can help you build credit by settling extra cash advances on time. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less with no credit check and no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later on. You have to download Dave today. Download Dave today at dave.com slash MLB. That's dave.com slash MLB, and you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. Terms and conditions do apply. Go to dave.com slash legal for those. Eligibility criteria, instant transfer fees apply. Baking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. The Cubs play the Metropolitans at 6, 10 p.m. Central Monday, and you can listen to every pitch with the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. On the SXM app, search Cubs or tune into channel 844 and catch the Cubs all season long on Sirius XM. The Mets Brewers. could use uh, – sorry, sorry, Matt. The what? Mets could use uh, a little help from Dave with all the uh, bad contracts they handed out this offseason. No kidding. Yeah, that's a good one from you. Yeah. And I still don't really know what their strategy is uh, at the deadline. I'm not sure I'm going to applaud it like everybody else did. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to sure I'm going to applaud a billionaire owner who failed right. uh, and then just bought prospects. But anyways, yeah, right. uh, the Mets were supposed to win 100 games this year, and uh, they're not even close. Uh, we're going to get to them in a few minutes. Uh, Brewers still lead the NL Central at 60 and 53. Cubs and Reds are both one and a half games back. Um, the Cubs have played one or two less games than the Reds, interestingly enough, because of a rain out at their place way back in April. The Reds have lost six straight games. Let me stop there first, Sam. Yep. Uh, your impressions of these two teams right now, because the Reds are going one way, the Cubs are going one way, and the Brewers are kind of in the middle. Yeah, great way to put it. Um, not surprised with the Reds. We've talked about that off yeah. here many times. Um, first of all, congratulations and thank you to our nation's capital. Uh, <laughs> what an awesome job going in. I know, seriously. I mean, can we let's think about what this team? They swept them. They swept them. They took two out of three from the Brewers during the week, and they traded us Candelario. Wow. I mean, we should fly to D.C. and do a trip. We should, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tour around the Lincoln Memorial a little bit. Maybe get like a Nationals yeah. foam finger? Yeah, let's, let's, let's generate some revenue for our nation's capital. Oh, man, thank you. Um, not surprised with the Reds. Can't believe they didn't get any pitching. Uh, I talked about that on the Red Show. I mean, they can't pitch. And 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 they're relying on a bunch of really good, solid young hitters. But sometimes the league could figure you out. They're in trouble. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But they could they could bounce back quickly. I mean, we all know how this goes. Um, mm -hmm. Milwaukee is Milwaukee. That was they really should have lost all three. Matt uh, Bednar blew a game yes. on, on Saturday. Um, it's going to be a grind the rest of the way. The Cubs have the most talented team. There's no question about that. They have four games left with Cincinnati that is in Great American Ballpark. Um, I think one of those is a makeup, right? Yeah, there's two games on the first day of the series. Yeah, and then they have six left with the Brew Crew, three at Wrigley, three at Wrigley North. Oh, wow. Um, and that Wrigley North, I believe, is the last series of the season. Last series of the year, yep. So, I you know, I feel really good right now. Uh, Woodruff, yeah. Woodruff came back from Milwaukee. I mean, if he's clicking on all cylinders, having to face those three guys every, you know, five days is tough. Right. But you know, the Cubs just checked a huge box, right, Matt? Like at the end of the day, mm -hmm. being able to gain ground, as I said, at the beginning of the show is an ode to a, an old entourage episode with Bob Ryan. If anyone's a mm, fan of okay. that, uh, you gain ground when, when, when Atlanta comes to town and Milwaukee plays the worst team in the division and the Reds mm -hmm. play one of the worst teams in the league, that, that, that may seem like a little thing now, but guess what? Next week at this time, we're going to be talking about playing the White Sox, the Royals, the Pirates, the Tigers. So as long as we beat who we're supposed to beat, we're going to come back and look at this weekend and say, oh, man, Milwaukee and Cincinnati let some opportunities slip. So even though the Cubs are still a game and a half out, I think they're in as good a shape, if not the best shape, out of all three teams. Yeah, no, it's uh, fantastic right now. And I actually thought the Reds were a little bit better than they than they have been. Um, or I, I had more uh, – hope is the wrong word, but I thought they would sustain a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think they're a it's victim good. right now of this weird thing in baseball where – Teams like to live in the future. I get it. Green and Lodolo come back in late August, but how do you know that you're going to still be in it then? Right. How do you know that? Right. You don't. No, you don't. They could be out of it at that point. Right. Um, in the wild card side of things, the oh. Phillies and Giants have distanced themselves uh, by a series. They're both yep. 61 and 51. They're three games ahead of the third spot in the wild card, which is now the Cubs. And the Reds, Marlins, Diamondbacks, and Padres, in that order, yep. are all within two and a half games of that final spot. Yep. Um, I'm not necessarily doing scoreboard watching of, of sure. teams behind the Cubs. I, yeah. I know uh, the Marlins and Diamondbacks were the ones in front of them up until Sunday, and the Padres are hot now. Um, but listen, there's a lot of teams in the convo and, and that's just how it is. Yeah. And thankful that August and September are relevant for the Cubs. That was a major goal of the season. Absolutely. Um, it, yeah. the, 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 the real thing, sorry, the real thing I'll just say about the wild card is, is it is a real path though. Like 
The, it seems the, like it, yeah. One of the following teams, and, and we don't know, like it's not like the Phillies or Giants are guaranteed, but let's take them out for a second. Right. One of the Cubs, Reds, Marlins, D-backs, and Padres are going to make the playoffs, right? Yes. And and uh, the Cubs, to me, are the best team out of those. They, they right. just are. So, you know, that, that that's something. It's it's a, you know, let's say Milwaukee somehow gets red hot or since he gets red hot, you do have another path. I agree with you. I'm more focused on the division because I just think that's the easier path and it's it's very, very attainable. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think the wild card is some like afterthought because if the season ended today, we'd be playing a three game series. You could definitely make it as a wild card. Yeah. And uh the Brewers next series. Uh, by the way, yeah, is home Rockies. against the Rockies, yeah. and then the Reds host the Marlins. Yeah, that, that, that'll help us in one way or another. And one of the reasons that the Cubs are uh, – you're not scared of any of these teams is because of the demise of the Mets. You figured the Mets and Padres would be in this conversation. They really haven't been. Right, right. And the Cubs uh, go to Queens, and we're going to preview the series next. Today's episode is also brought to you by – Better help. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while, na- while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com. Slash locked on MLB. Cubs and Mets, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all three games at 6 10 p.m. Central. And familiar faces that I, I believe the Cubs have faced this year. Uh, you have Smiley Senga, Tyone yep. Carrasco, and Hendricks yep. and Peterson. Sam, the Mets had Peterson. a major sell off, and yeah. uh, they're not really a threat in my mind, except maybe Monday's game against Senga's had a nice year. Yeah, you want to go in and win the series. That's all. Um, You want to go in and win the series. Sanga versus the Cubs uh, in May. Five innings, six hits, three earned, five walks. Um, Wow. He he is a guy where he will grind. He's he's had a nice year. You're right. Um, But I've watched a lot of him because he's on my fantasy team. And if you -hmm. you were able to lay off that, what they call that, like, ghost fork ball of his – enough he'll walk you he'll throw 100 plus pitches in five six innings he he reminds me a little bit in style not not in terms of skill set but in terms of approach to like a a a, a worse version righty blake snell where he, he may dominate you but i don't see him going deep into this game um the haps the talkmans the bellingers the candelario you work counts he'll walk you a little bit and I, I think it bodes well. As Carrasco pitched really well against us early in the season, if I remember correctly. That was the game that I think the Cubs got blown out. And then uh, I don't think they faced Peterson. I could be wrong on that. But yeah, I maybe in relief or something. Yeah, maybe in relief because I think it was I think it was Megill, Carrasco, and Sanga um, when we faced them at Wrigley. But yeah, you want to win the series. This is a team really struggling. They they've lost a bunch in a row. Jump out on them early. They have nothing to play for. Nothing. There's right, no interest. Right. There's nothing. Don't give them anything. Jump out on them early. Yeah. Um, you know, Smiley, obviously, Monday, you know, he's due to pitch well, so hopefully you will. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, after this week, Matt, it gets a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, because the Blue Jays, I need to do a standings check on them, are in the playoff conversation still, I believe. Oh, I, th- I think they're in. As oh, of today. okay. They'd be, even be in at the season. I think so. Yeah. I think so. But I could, I could do and, some quick um, on that. Yeah, then I th- I believe you have the Royals a week from Monday. So yeah, Royals, Sox. Um, and- yeah, and one thing to keep an eye on. We'll preview it for Wednesday's episode. But yeah, Seiya Suzuki has officially been benched. Benched. Manager David Ross talked about it over the weekend, including and, uh, lefties. Including I lefties. I think there's a chance he doesn't play Wednesday. Also, okay. I think they might give him a clean week off. 
Yeah, because I, you know, you know what I'm going to say. You were at the game today. Another absolute missile for Talkman off a of lefty. There's no reason to sit him. Uh, There's against, not. There's against not. against anybody. You're right, and he, it sounds like he's just going to stick around in the dugout, similar to Castro in 15, as we've mentioned. So, right. Uh, we'll see. Castro had six games off, and then uh, did really well after that. So yeah, but and we'll even see. when he. Even when he had that time off, though, and he came back, he, he wasn't an, a regular. He wasn't a regular. Oh, gotcha. Until, he was a part-timer. He wasn't a regular player He for about a month plus. Got it. So yeah. then, yeah, maybe, so maybe it's a full week off and then lefties uh, possibly. We'll see. Yeah, and, he, we'll and see. by the way, it's not like, you know. He's he has a here. roster spot. That's why I'm kind of like, well, what are you doing? But Yeah. Um, we'll real, real quick, before we, before we close down, um, you're going to see Caleb Killian pitch this week. Oh yeah. Point. He was promoted Sunday. Yeah. And, and he's going to like, I think he's going to pitch a lot and I think it might be Monday. Like if smiley, okay. if smiley ends up, let's say smiley goes four or five, th- they need to give their main guys a full day. Yep. Um, at least that would be uh, nice to have a day off. And yeah. Respect. So, so, so they're going to bring him up. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will say Matt, the, the, the decision to, to pitch Wisniewski on Friday, I'm still not understanding. I just have to mention that it was such yeah. a blowout. It was such a blowout game, and then Anthony K got sent down on Sunday, and he didn't even eat. Like, why not let him at least eat it for you before he gets sent down? Just I, I just, strange. I had, I had to mention that, but um, he threw well again, by the way. So the Cubs kind of now with Assad and Wisniewski have two guys that sneakily could just bail you out of a short outing and get you to the bullpen. Yeah, and I'd, I'd still like to see Wisniewski maybe in like a seventh, a sixth or seventh if Fulmer isn't available like on Monday, for example, or something He'd like that. He'd be a great – He, him and Fulmer are similar, so yeah, it'd be we'll great. See. But this is awesome, man. Just enjoy it. Everybody enjoy it. it you know, th- there's nothing better. I, I know I know this is a bear city. I know Michael Jordan played here, but there's just nothing like – August, September, a winning baseball team, Cubs contending baseball. It's nothing like it. There's just nothing like There's it. Not. And I want everybody to enjoy it. And I know we will enjoy it with us. And and who knows where this season's going to go? Who knows at this point? I'm not eliminating anything. Good. We we shouldn't at this point. Are you kidding? You know, I'm like I'm, I'm so stressed, but in a it's good been way. Been a ridiculous year. No, oh, this has been one of the craziest experiences i mean yeah it's a weird experience two three months ago i you know i didn't even know if i wanted to watch anymore yeah i know i know it's very very weird now but very great no it's i'm grateful we're great we're all we're grateful for everybody especially bellinger go ahead shout out to the everydayers (laughs) with us all five episodes throughout the week and you could become an everydayer by checking us out each and every weekday jen hoyer mentioned bellinger the other day like did like a, a suspicious smile at the end, almost Tony, like, "Hey, we're gonna re-sign him." Tony Gwynn Bellinger. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for Locked On Cubs on YouTube. We have soared past five thousand subs. We got there just after the episode Thursday, and now it's at like fifty three hundred or something. Thanks to the audience, but most importantly, thanks to this baseball team, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, <laughs> absolutely, and streaming. And here comes PCA. Statement series. Let's see what the Cubs could do this week, dude. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs, a winning baseball team.